All right, well, let's get our next question here, Jim. This one was sent to cornydrivethru at gmail.com from Jeff in Massachusetts. When you talk about the Von Erichs, you and Brian never mention Mike Von Erich. Why do you and Brian not <laughs> mention him when you talk about the other Von Erichs? That's the question? That is indeed the okay, question. Okay, we don't talk about Chris a lot either. Um, we don't talk about Doris a lot. It's not that they were horrible people. They just didn't make a lot of mark in wrestling. And, you know, poor I was there when Mike was still wrestling. And before he had the the... God, I was there. I think he had the shoulder injury while I was there. And then... In Israel, I think. Well, then we had just left because we left before it. One of the reasons we left was Israel. We got, we got that Texas Stadium payoff for the quarter of a million dollar house in May when we were in the tag team title match. I think it was like $1,100 and immediately started looking up Jim Crockett's phone number that Ric Flair had given us. And then we heard they were going to Israel and we said, okay, this is the perfect time to get the fuck out of here. Because when they went to Israel, the guys, we talked to some of the guys that went, they flew them over there. They met them at the airport with the, I guess they don't have National Guard over there, but whoever the military was, and they escorted them everywhere. And outside their hotel rooms, they each had a service member of whatever the service was with a machine gun stationed outside their hotel room doors. Not a place I would ever want to fucking go. But anyway, so the point is, Mike was there, and he was still wrestling, and it was just, it was painful, because you could tell that the people loved the Von Erics, but they still could see through Mike, and they didn't want to boo him, and they kind of wanted to cheer for him. It was almost like watching, if you go to your kid's, softball game and they're not doing too well on the field you're really wanting to pull for him but you can't not see it right and that was because he was skinny and he was just he didn't have a fireball personality he wasn't an athlete like kevin and carrie and david he he was he was a real quiet kid but he also you know he was doing some of the same things the other von erics were doing and so mentally he was not that swift on the uptake most of the time before his surgery, toxic shock, high fever, and brain damage. And so then when they tried to put him back in the ring after all that, it was so sad that, um, you know, everybody just knew this is not going to work. And then what happened happened. So it just, he just wasn't, he was like, he was like Chris in a, Chris was not the tall, skinny one. Chris was the short, dumpy one. Were you around Chris at all? I mean, after you were there in world class, I mean, years later when he actually tried to break into the business. No, the only time I was ever around Chris, I was around Chris when I was there. One time he, you know, he got, he was flying somewhere. Southwest Airlines was $30. You could go anywhere in the state of Texas then. So a lot of times the guys flew to West Texas or sometimes to South Texas or whatever. And I remember him getting on the planes with some of the boys sometimes, you know, just to go hang out with them at the show. Um, I can't, I, he was probably what mid teens at that point. And yeah. I mean, one of the planes that we were on, I will just say that one of the boy, I'm thinking it was Dennis might have seen him getting on Chris and just said, that boy doesn't know whether he's on an airplane or the space shuttle. Because he was just, he was off in another world. Um, you know, nowadays, wrestling fans obviously don't think too highly of Mike Von Erich's work. It's a very sad story. A lot of people say that Mike never wanted to do it. A lot of other people say Mike did want to do it. And the problem was he wasn't good enough. So you hear conflicting things. I think that's, I think that's the one. He, if he was going to do it, he felt an obligation because he was a Von Erich. And so he didn't want to. He knew that he couldn't, but he didn't want to embarrass the family or anybody, and that's where it led to the mental conflicts, I think. But in 85, I mean, we all say this now, and it was said, you know, later on in the 80s, 
were these things, I mean, you couldn't say too much openly in the locker room, but were these things being said about Mike then in the moment by people outside of the Midnight Express? By the boys in the locker room? Yeah. Yes. Everybody, I mean, everybody knew when, when remember, uh, Rip Oliver came in from Portland with Billy Jack. Yeah. And I managed Rip Oliver you managed for the him. time he yeah. was there, and they put him in a program with Mike. And I think, actually, as I recall, the angle that when when Billy Jack, when Carrie didn't get the movie role and came back, and that meant Billy Jack was there, and he was a spare baby face, and he was going back to Portland, Rip, the only reason Rip Oliver came to Dallas was to come with Billy Jack. And since he saw it wasn't working out, he was going to go back to Portland. So they did a deal where Rip slammed the door in the Will Rogers Coliseum in Fort Worth. One of the doors on Mike's hand either broke the hand, broke the wrist or whatever, and he was suspended for doing that. And that's how he left the territory, as I recall. I mean, he had some matches with him. And Bobby and Dennis worked with Mike and Brian Adidas a few times. and he was a nice kid and you didn't, you know, you tried to help him and everybody, the veterans tried to work with him and, and flair even had a match with him once. I think a TV match, they did some kind of angle for something. He went 10 minutes with Mike and everybody tried, Yeah, you know, but he just, he wasn't real good or believable. And also there was an element of him just being just a, you know, a not, he didn't have an over the top personality. He wasn't the center of attention. He wasn't like Carrie, the, you know, the fucking gorgeous Greek God jock that could just walk into a room and start laughing and everybody would fucking look at him. He was a quiet kid, nice kid. And you didn't have any, but I swear one time Bobby and, and, and Dennis at a spot show, I remember it was a South Texas spot show. It may have been an afternoon before a San Antonio show where Mike Von Eric and Brian Adias and Brian Adias was a pretty good worker, but Mike is in there and Bobby starts doing the, the stuff that Tojo Yamamoto taught him where he would crouch down and try to sneak up on the baby face while the baby face was talking to the referee and the people would say, Oh, watch out, watch out. And then the baby face turn around and catch him. Right. Well, Bobby's crouching and creeping and Mike turns around and sees him and Mike sees Bobby crouch down and Mike turns around and crouches down. Well, then Bobby crouches down a little lower. Well, then Mike crouches. Now they're, they've done a, they're both doing a full squat in the middle of the ring. <laughs> and then I, cause Rick Hazard <clears throat> was the referee and he used to ride with us sometime and I, hey, referee, he's crouching. That's not legal. And I swear to God, Mike stood bolt straight upright. As soon as I said that, oh shit, like he was going to get disqualified. <laughs> and it just, you know, like I said, he was a nice kid. And I don't mean to say anything bad about him. And it's terrible the way it, it turned out, but he wasn't a good wrestler, unfortunately. And it was just, it was doomed. 